Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to another Minecraft video. In this one we're going to take a look at something really quite special. This is my fully functional basketball hoop system that I've created using redstone. I have to say, there's a ton of different bits and pieces going on. First up, we've got a slime block launcher that shoots us up towards the hoop. Then you need to throw the item into the hopper. If you manage to do that, then it will drop through all of the hoppers and you'll get yourself a point on the board. Then uh, this redstone lamp will switch over to the other side, which means it's the other players go. So generally speaking, I would suggest playing this with your friends. But if you don't have any friends like myself, then of course you can play it on your own. It's just as fun, but I will warn you, this thing is incredibly frustrating, okay? Incredibly frustrating. So here goes. I'm going to try my best to demonstrate scoring a point. So you have to run up to this thing, you run over the pressure plate, you get launched upwards, and oh my word, I actually scored. I was not expecting to do that. That's not one of the first times I've scored in like 15 tries. Fantastic, so there we go, we managed to get ourselves a point on the board, and then as you can see, this redstone lamp has switched over, which means it is the other player's turn. I, I can't believe that. Oh, that's fantastic. Once you've played the game for a little while, you may end up with a situation that looks a little bit like this. As you can see, the guy on the left has scored absolutely no points, he's done completely terribly, so I guess that's probably me, and then this guy over here has managed to score five points, so I guess we'll just call him Michael Jordan or something. Now once you get to this situation, obviously you want to reset the game so you can have another one, and all you have to do is hit this button right here, and as you can see, all of the scores are wiped off the board, we get all of the redstone lamps flashing on, and now the scores have been reset, which means that if one of the players scores a point, you can see that get registered in point number one. In terms of the redstone behind this thing, yeah, I mean, it looks, it looks quite complicated, but I can promise you, it's actually a really simple little redstone circuit that isn't too tricky to build, but as you can see, it does use a ton of redstone resources, Namely repeaters, if you don't have too much stone and redstone torches, then maybe this probably isn't the one for you. But anyway, there is a world download down in the description if you do want to check this thing out for yourselves. But now, let's crack on with that tutorial. So the first thing you want to do is actually create the framework for this thing. Now, the way that we're going to do that is by placing a line of blocks going across like this. And then you want five redstone lamps just running across the middle just like that and you want to surround all of these redstone lamps with blocks. Now the reason we're surrounding all of them is because these blocks down on the bottom here are actually going to have comparators running into them which are going to power all the redstone lamps. So you might as well do that now. Then you just want to place a block down in the middle like that and place a bunch of hoppers going upwards like this. Now you need to go a little ways up right here, just four blocks above the top of your iron blocks. Then you want to place another hopper right there and then your glass going around the top like this which is going to act as the basketball hoop and you can do that up like that to make it look like a realistic basketball hoop and then you just want to chuck in at the other side of redstone lamps once again so that is one two three four five and then you place your other blocks going around like this with your redstone lamps going through the middle just like that now i'm going to do all of the decoration blocks so i'm going to place a line of blocks going right the way across here and then from the second redstone lamp along i'm going to place in another line of blocks then this is where our three wide area is going to be going and you want to go back five blocks so that's one two three four five blocks right there and then we're going to have our removable objects going across like this now this is where our slime block launcher is actually going to be going so you need blocks like this and blocks like that and then we can carry out all of our blocks just going across like this. And of course, this is where we're actually going to be running up to the slime block launcher. That there is where your pressure plate is going to be going. And then if you want to go underneath and place it in a block, then chuck in a sticky piston facing upwards with a slime block on its face. That is what is going to be firing the player up from this area here onto the basketball hoop itself. Seems like a pretty crazy jump, doesn't it? But it's just about possible. For the first tiny piece of redstone, we're actually going to be creating our slime block launcher. So you want to place a block down at the bottom there then two blocks going across and a block up just like this with repeaters running across like that. One of them set to four ticks and one of them set to two ticks with redstone dust there and redstone dust right there. Now what that means is, is when we run over this pressure plate, as you can see, we get launched upwards and we can throw the item into the hopper. Now, if you didn't want any of the scoring systems or anything like that, congratulations. You have just constructed a basketball hoop, but if you want everything else going on, which let's face it, you probably do, then we have got a bit more work to put into this one. Next up, we are going to create the point scoring system. So the first thing you want to do is go underneath your little hopper line right here and place a block down at the bottom and then a chest around about there. Then you want to place two hoppers going across like this, a block up like that, and then a hopper facing in that direction, which is still going to drop the items down into that hopper, but it's going to take a little bit extra time to do it, which is very important indeed. The next thing you want to do is place a block out like this with a comparator running out from that hopper, block up like that, block down here with redstone dust running into a block and then a repeater facing in this direction then on this side we want to block up like this and then two repeaters running out from that block also facing in that direction right there 
and you want to place a block up like this, a sticky piston facing across with a block on its face, and you want to place a block running out like this with repeaters once again facing off in this direction, sticky pistons facing upwards just like that with blocks on both of those, and then blocks facing out from either one of those with repeaters sent to two ticks on both sides. We're now going to be leaving that circuit behind temporarily because we need to hook up all of the redstone lamps into all of our counter systems. So you want to place a line of blocks going across the bottom there with comparators running into all of those blocks and then you want to just carry out that line once again and place another line of comparators on this side as well just running into all of those and then the next thing that we've got to do is we've actually got to place in all of our hoppers. You want to place a block up like this, then place a hopper running into that one, and just take a line of hoppers running across, and then a hopper facing in this direction, and then a line of hoppers running across like this. So if you were to place an item on side this thing, it would be cycling around like that, then go back around here, and basically make its way around in a loop. So then you want to do the same thing on the other side, but you want to do it in the opposite direction. So a hopper right there, and then your hoppers running across like this, and then a hopper running into that one, and your hoppers running back across just like that. Then on top of all your hoppers, you just want to chuck in some redstone dust just like this and some redstone dust just like that on this side. And that will allow you to lock the hoppers, which means that you'll be able to stop the item so that you can actually count the score using redstone pulses. So now we just need to connect these redstone lines right here into these redstone lines right here. And the way that we're going to do that is by placing redstone torch towers. You just want to place a line of redstone torches running up like this and a redstone torch right there. Blocks running out like this and redstone dust running into that one. You should see all of those will power, which is pretty good. And then on this side, we need to do a pretty similar thing, but it's a little bit more complicated. We just need a redstone torch there, block up like this, and then a redstone torch there once again, and then a line of redstone running across the top of those, above that sticky piston right there, running into all of your hoppers. Now we just need to do the timing circuits for the player swapping mechanisms. So you wanna go under this block right here and place some redstone dust, then place a line of blocks running out up into this chest, with repeaters set to four ticks running into all of those and you're going to hear me say that quite a bit during this clip because we have got quite a few repeaters to place. So you need to place a block right there, redstone dust and then all of your repeaters once again and then a really long line of blocks running right the way across into this piston. You want to place a block up like that, redstone dust right there, a repeater and then a sticky piston facing upwards with a block on top to create a monostable circuit which is going to turn this piston into a T flip-flop. Then you want to place some redstone at the end and once again long line of repeaters all of them set to four ticks. So four ticks on that one, four ticks on those ones, and four ticks on that one right there. The next thing that we need to build are the player turn indicators. So basically, the mechanism that shows you whose player's turn it currently is. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, I do apologize. You need to chuck in two redstone lamps just above the second redstone lamp right there. And then you need to place a block up like this with a sticky piston facing upwards and slime blocks are going up like that. You need three slime blocks and then a redstone block up at the top and a movable object with redstone dust right there and we're going to run that redstone across like this and into this block just like that and then on this side we're going to run that redstone into a block with a redstone torch on the side and redstone dust running in like that so that means that it is currently this player's turn and you can tell it's this player's turn because the block of this piston right here is in front of this repeater which means that if the point is scored the system will detect that and it will actually run up into this set of hoppers, which means the point will be registered on this side. Once again, really hope that makes sense. Last but not least, we're going to do the reset circuit so that we can switch up all of the scores and basically start the game once again. Now, the way that we do that is by placing a repeater running into this block right here, three blocks going across like this, sticky piston right there, the redstone block on its face. Then we're going to take a comparator output from this hopper and run that into this block right here. Then we're going to place a repeater running into that block and a sticky piston facing upwards with a block on top to create a monostable circuit. And that is the entire reset circuit all done. All you have to do is run that into a button and we'll be doing that in the next couple seconds. But first we've got to do the same thing on the other side. So that's a repeater running into this block right here. Once again, your three blocks going across like that. Sticky piston with a redstone block on its face and then a comparator coming out from this hopper running straight into the piston and then a repeater, sticky piston on top with a block on his face. And there we go, we've got the monostable circuit and also we've got the comparator from the hopper. To hook all of that up, all you need to do is place a button down at the bottom here. Then we're going to go a couple blocks down like this, just underneath the button and run that line of blocks out like this and into our sticky piston. Now the way that we do that is by doing a slightly higgledy-piggledy redstone line that sort of goes ups and downs and all over the place. We want to do the same thing on the other side. So just go underneath all of your hoppers right there just like that and then place your line of blocks running out like this and we're going to run a redstone line directly from that button into all of those pistons and in theory 
you shouldn't need a redstone repeater. So let's run up like that and like that. And then the same thing on the other side. So that's redstone going across like this. Underneath the hoppers, of course, hoppers are transparent, which means that it's not cutting off the redstone signal, which is very nice. So that goes across like this. And there we go. We can now reset our scores nice and easily. So the final thing that you have to do is place an item inside each one of these hoppers right here. So the first hopper that is being powered, and that should be everything. So now we've got quite a bit of testing to do. The first thing that we need to test is the point scoring system. So we throw an item inside here, and we should see that the points will appear on this side right there. Then when we stand on the pressure plate, we should see that our slime block launch is working, which is looking good. And also our player swapping circuit also looks to be working as well. And now if we try our best to score a point, we should see that the score will register on that side too. Fantastic, that is working like a charm. Now if we hit this button right here, we should see that all of the scores get wiped off and the whole system resets. And if we score another point just like this, then we should see that that will be scored on this side. Fantastic, so this thing is working like a charm. We've done a full tutorial of how to build a working basketball hoop with working point scoring system. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But unfortunately, that's all I've got time for today. And I'll catch you in the next one. I, I don't know what just happened with my outro, but we're gonna be sticking with it. <laughs>